Pete Golding, defensive coordinator and inside linebackers coach Pete Golding, who's entering his fourth year in the program since coming in in the 2018 campaign, his third year calling defenses as the defensive coordinator. So for Coach Pete, uh, we kind of all know the story. Came in 2018, highly energetic, highly enthused. He was with a couple of lesser tier, smaller programs prior to getting this opportunity with the Crimson Tide. And you know, 2018, he was the co-defensive coordinator under Taj Lupoy. 2019 was Golding's first year calling the defense himself. And of course, he had kind of a rough start there with your, your main two linebackers, Dylan Moses and Joshua McMillan, not being able to play the first year because of torn, well, because of injuries there. And you had to play young players, had to get those young players up to speed. Of course, throughout that season also, uh, Brian Ray went down with an injury. And so did DJ Dale. So Pete Gold had to deal with a lot of, quite a few medical mishaps in his first season. This past year, the defense got better as the season progressed. It improved. It got more, it got its sea legs more so under it. But you still have the situations where against Ole Miss in Florida that both of those programs put up over 40 points on the Alabama defense, and U.S. fans were very much so annoyed by this. So as he's now fourth year in the program, third year as a D.C., the thought process is with everybody back, with the main guys on defense back, with the experienced guys back, with talented young players on this roster, what would be the expectations here for Pete Golding this season, aside from guiding this defense to a national championship? And, and people have, you know, 10 to 15 forms of expectations for Coach Golding, but I feel like everything can be broken down into three major, three Three main, three prior, three uh, premier uh, marquee expectations. So we're going to dive into those right now. So number one, so, so the three expectations for Pete Golding, as you're seeing here, seeing them here on screen. Uh, number one, uh, being able to win on third down. That's very important, winning, uh, winning on third down this defense. Uh, number two, creating a lot of negative plays on the field. And then three, you know, being able to hold today's offenses, these modern offenses, to just you know, 14 to 17 points per game. Those are the big expectations, the big three. But number one, being able to win on third down. This is huge because this was a bit of a problem a season ago, especially against the good teams, against the Floridas, against the Ole Misses. You know, Bama had some issues there when it was third and long, you know, third and eight, third and nine, third and ten, third and seven. You know, Alabama was not really able to win on third down. Could not quite do that the way it would have wanted to, the way it would have liked to. You know, Coach Saban spoke on it last year. We got to win on third down. We got to get off the field on third down. We got to make plays on third down. We got to affect the quarterback on third down. We got to mean business and shut off the opposing team's momentum if they're trying to gain momentum. Definitely want to shut that off on third down. And that starts with Alabama's defensive front. When you look at guys like Will Anderson, Tim Williams, uh, guys like Christopher Allen, DJ Dale, Fidaria Mathis, those guys have got to get pressure on the quarterback, those guys have got to be, have got to be able to stop the run to uh, limit the success the opposition has on first down and second down. So by the time you get to third down, you're already in that winning mindset. So first and foremost, for Pete Golding and this defense, winning on third down. Number two, uh, creating a lot of turnovers. So creating those negative plays is huge. And you look at this defense – They've got the players to be able to do this, especially in the secondary when you talk Malachi Moore, DeMarco Helms, uh, Jordan Battle, Josh Job, Jalen Armour Davis, Brian Branch. They got all of the talent need be in the secondary to force interceptions, to force fumbles, to uh, create bad at passes, to uh, attack the quarterback, get sacks, get tackles for loss, get quarterback hurries, anything to really – offset the flow of the offense 
the Crimson Tide, they have the playmakers on the defensive side of the ball to do this, but it comes down to, you know, Pete Golding's play calling, putting these guys in situations where they can be opportunistic, they can have those negative plays, they can force those turnovers, they can be fierce, they can fly around the field, they can be dominant, they can be the Alabama defense that, you know, tied fans you guys witnessed in the 2011 season, the 2016 season, and the 2009 season, 2012 seasons, the seasons where you saw Bama win championships under Saban and the defense was otherworldly good. The reason for that being they were able to or it was able to create those negative plays consistently and that's going to be a big thing here for Pete Gold in, in the upcoming season. And so last but not least here, for this group in terms of expectation, holding these new aged offenses, these, that the modern day, today's explosive offenses between 14 and 17 points per game. And I know it's hard because of how much, how much the game has changed, how much the game has evolved, how much everything has been geared toward the offense. Coach Saban has mentioned this a lot when you discuss the scheme has favored offenses, the rules have favored offenses. It's a space and speed game. It's get the ball to the edge. It's, it's quick schemes. It's run as many plays as you can without allowing the defensive team to substitute and get those changes and get different guys, get the right personnel on the field so we have have seen how much the game truly has evolved but even with that being said there's got to be a way to where you know the defense this year for Alabama can hold these teams between 14 and 17 points per game because that's the new shutout you're no longer you're no longer going to be able to hold these guys to seven and ten points per game like you did back in the early years of safe and we're talking 2008 9 to you no know, 2013-14 that, that had what that have you so the new shutout today is, can we hold the Clemsons? Can we hold the Ohio States? Can Alabama hold the, the Ole Misses, the Miamis, the Floridas? No matter who is on the schedule, can Alabama hold these teams to an average of 14 to 17 points per game? That's the new shutout. That's the new measuring, measuring stick. That's the new gold standard for how to be – a defense, when I look at this unit here, when you talk about just the mixture of guys up front with the mixture of guys in the secondary, I feel like it can be done. I feel like this can be done here for Alabama, but it all goes back to the main two things for Pete Golding in this defense. Alabama will be able to hold teams between 14 and 17 points on average if it's able to first win on third down. Set these offenses behind the eight ball on first and second down and third down, being able to finish the job, finish the play, win on third down, and then number two, creating those negative plays, whether it be sacks, whether it be tackles for laws, whether it be bad at passes, whether it be quarterback hurries forcing incompletions, whether it be forcing fumbles, causing interceptions, whatever your form or whatever the form of negative play has to be. If Alabama can do those two things, it will have a huge chance of holding these offenses between 14 and 17 points per game. Those, to me, just the three biggest expectations that U.S. fans have for a peak golding defense in the upcoming season because people want to see after three years of people, national media saying you haven't looked elite in a long time, you haven't looked great in a long time, you haven't looked special in a long time, you haven't looked dominant in a long time, here is an opportunity for this defense to rise up, to elevate up, to emerge, and make everybody in the national columns eat their words and, have, and be a defense that can really be that fearsome, head-on-fire type of group in the upcoming campaign. Here.